She got her own house. She got her own house. She got, she got, she got, she got, she got her own house. Hey family, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to talk about my credit access experience and my conditions that I got. So let's talk about it. So I'm having some lighting challenges today, family. I'm not sure why. I'm filming in the exact same location that I do all of my videos, uh, but just bear with me, please. But I wanted to give you guys an update on my credit access uh, process, I guess we would call it. But I am finally credit access approved. Oh my goodness. Uh, it did take me three tries, however. Um, I thought that I was just going to zip through credit access, but I will let you guys know that I got conditions twice and I am happy to say that all of my conditions were because of my mistakes or because of my oversights. Um, it did not take me three tries to get through credit access because I had sent my MC something and they didn't upload it to uh, the file for the underwriter or, um, you know, just something like that. So I'm happy to report that part of my process. It was sucked, yes, that I was sitting in credit access for so long, but I'm happy that it was by my own hands and not by NACA's hands. But it took me three tries to get through credit access. Um... It actually took them about one and a half days each time I got submitted. So the first time I got submitted, um, and then you'll notice also that the thumbnail is red because I do have some live footage from my MC uh, very quickly going over some of my conditions. So if you want to stick around to the end, I'll attach that to the end of the video but um the first time some conditions came back i didn't really understand um you know what what all some of these were but between my realtor and my mc they helped me address everything um but we'll go ahead and start going over some of those conditions right now so what you're seeing on your screen currently is what it will look like once you get submitted for credit access finally so it'll just say credit access requested not pending or anything like that it'll say requested and you are still able to upload documents throughout this process i was still able to go in and upload uh, my pay stubs um but then you'll scroll down after you get a text so you'll get a text from naca saying uh, that your credit access has been requested and then if it's like me not qualified uh or excuse me not qualified oh my gosh uh i'm way beyond that but i'll i'll it'll say conditions um and so when you log back into your web file you'll see on the left hand side all of the conditions from the underwriter so we'll go through those now and mind you i got uh two different sets of conditions i addressed them the first time i got resent back got more conditions a second time with clarification address that and then get sent back a third time where i got credit access approved. okay so these are the conditions that i got so the first one uh, that you'll see is because i got a bunch and when i say a bunch a bunch of inquiries on my credit in the past 90 days just from getting pre-approved from all of these lenders so i had to write an loe for each lender that pulled my credit. So I uploaded that LOE. I'd actually sent that LOE to my MC to upload. So at first I was kind of like, oh, I sent her this. Why didn't she upload this and attach it to my web file? Like this is an unnecessary condition, but we'll get to in a minute what happened with that. But I went ahead and I resent. And there's also, oh, so there is a spot on your web file where you can submit things yourself. You can submit LOEs and everything yourself. Um, but your MC will still need to uh, put everything together and then resubmit you to credit access. So just because you upload a document to the condition doesn't mean that it automatically gets shot over to the underwriter. Just FYI. Condition number two. So provide a corrected letter of uh, addresses showing the multiple addresses on my credit report. I thought that was also something that was addressed previously because i'd uh, attached it to and if you'd missed that appoint uh, appointment my follow-up requalification appointment 
go back and watch that one. But I addressed that with the HC back this summer. And so again, I was like, why is this coming up again? But more on that in a minute, you'll see why this came back as a condition from the under. Okay, condition number three. Uh, I needed a updated ID picture. And if you watched my first credit access video, you will see where the MC actually told me I can't see the expiration date. It may be a problem. It may not be a problem. You've been qualified through NACA twice now and it hasn't been an issue. So we'll just see what they say. Sure enough, it came back as a condition. So all I did was take a picture with my cell phone of my ID. I think I maybe even took like three different pictures from three different angles, combined all of those into one PDF document. So it was literally like a three page PDF document of different angles of my ID and I uploaded those in PDF format into my web file condition. So I was able to address that. Um, also, it says that I needed to uh, show that my earnest money was deducted from my checking account. And also, if you watch that video, you will hear my MC saying, we need the receipted earnest, earnest money. And so I did not have that yet. So she'd already prepared me that that would probably come back as a condition and it did. Um, also, so property and the way that they worded this shows that they are, I guess, maybe new at being an underwriter uh, because they were talking about uh, the seller is not an individual. Instead of calling them the articles of incorporation, they just said the seller is not an individual. The seller can't sign, you know, so um, I actually needed to escalate that one to try point homes and my realtor was able to do that and get the builder to send over the articles of incorporation and got that one addressed eventually but more to come on that as well okay so rent a center let me just pause right here to take a second to address this one in detail i have a refrigerator that i purchased through rent a center and i have been qualified from naca or through naca twice now and this has never come up that uh, I guess they saw my bank statements that I was paying rent a center every two weeks when I got paid. So I was actually pretty shocked to get this condition because this payment has been coming out of my checking account the entire time I've been going through the NACA process. And this was just coming up right now. Thank you, Jesus, that I didn't have but like $40 uh, coming out of my checking account for rent center because they literally said uh, we need to verify this to make sure that th there is an outstanding debt that's not showing up on the credit report. So this could have absolutely messed up and derailed my entire NACA process had I been paying, you know, something crazy like two or three hundred dollars a month to rent -a center. But thankfully, I only owed three payments left and I was just able to upload my most recent account summary that I received from Renner Center with an LOE just stating, I only have three payments left. This is, uh, you know, the end of it. Here's the LOE. Here's my account summary directly from Renner Center. Reach out to me if you have any questions. So that addressed that. But this is just an FYI that if you have errands, Renner Center, um, I don't even know what other places you can still like rent stuff like that. But just an FYI, oh, and I think Court, if Court is still in business too, I've rented some stuff from Court, C-O-T before, C-O-R-T, excuse me. Um, but if you have something like that, that's actually recurring, coming out of your checking account. And I have other recurring things coming out of my checking account too, like um, basketball stuff for my child and, uh, you know, other things like that. I've never been asked like about after school care or anything, but for some reason this caught their eye, but just be prepared to address it during credit access. I'm only speaking for myself. I can't say that for other people, this has not come up at qualification, but for me, it did not come up until credit access, but just be prepared or go ahead and factor that into your DTI whenever you're doing your own calculations because they will call it out and you will have to address it. And if it's not below the, the 10 payment threshold to not count, then it will absolutely be counted. So I addressed all of that with LOEs, let my MC know that everything had been addressed as far as the things that I needed to take care of. 
um, once I got an updated bank transaction summary showing that the earnest money had been taken out of my account, as well as the resubmitting the LOEs, again, that I'd already submitted, um, that I thought I needed for the multiple addresses and for the credit increase that was uh, on my credit report. And then as far as the articles of incorporation, my realtor actually escalated to the regional director because she was like, this is not anything that's even required right now. She's doing a new build. Like this is just going to slow the process down. Uh, why are we requesting this at this stage? This could take an extremely long time to get. So thankfully the regional director agreed with her. I never saw any communication between my realtor and um, the regional director, but I guess the regional director, because he was already on the email chain, just took it up with the MC directly. And so she said that she was able to get an exception for the articles of incorporation, given that I'm doing a new build and that it's going to take almost a freaking year for my house to get completed. So that was done. And so after I addressed the other three conditions, she submitted me back to credit access a second time. Once again, it took maybe a day and a half for them to respond. I got uh, more conditions again. I got the text and I have more conditions. So now let's get on to, I'm going to flash on your screen what it looked like and why I thought I was addressing conditions and I really wasn't and how I wish that the underwriter would have provided this information the first time. Okay, now if you look, it's going to look like um, the exact same condition that I flashed on the screen at first. But if you look, you'll see where it says update. This is the second time I was submitted back uh, for this same condition. And this time they provided more clarity on what they needed. And so um, they said that I left off one of the creditors or excuse me, lenders or um, people that pulled my credit. And so that's the reason why they said that I needed an LOE for that. It wasn't that my MC didn't attach the LOE to my file the first time. So that was a relief that goes back to what I told you guys earlier, that all of the delays were caused by me and not by my MC or by NACA. So I had to go and just edit real simple, edit the LOE that I'd already written, added that one creditor in there and re-signed it, re-uploaded it, boom. Okay, so the second one um, was that I had multiple addresses and apparently they don't believe that you can live in two places at one time. The reason why I had multiple addresses listed is because I still get all of my mail at a certain address. Every item of credit that I've ever opened has been under another address. The address that I'm at now is not associated with anything on my credit file, including my driver's license. My driver's license matches where I get my mail, matches what's on my credit report. So I didn't think that it was necessary for me to um, have my current physical address outside of me just giving it to NACA. But they did not appreciate the fact uh, that I had the multiple addresses and said that that's not the case. So I actually had to say that I did not live at the address where I got my mail and it, I stopped residing there once I moved in here. Like that's the level of detail that they wanted me to say. So I was just like, okay, that's weird, but whatever. Let me just give y'all what y'all are asking for so that we can all just move on. So I just edited the LOE just to tweak the dates and re-upload it, and that was that on that. So I went ahead and addressed all of those conditions. I sent an email to my MC after the second time, letting her know that I had addressed everything. She went ahead and submitted me back to Credit Access. I got another text message from NACA. And this time it only took them about a half of a day. Like she submitted me the evening before and by lunchtime the very next day, I had gotten another text from NACA saying that I was credit access approved. So in all in all, like I said, it took me seven days from beginning to end to get through credit access. It went fast on the underwriters part. I do wish, however, that they provided the amount of detail Originally, in the first set of conditions that they provided once I did not um, upload what they were looking for because I could have just gotten all of that out of the way the first time instead of having them to review my file a second time. 
So that's my only quip, I guess, if I had to pick anything once I got actually the ball rolling on the credit access process. But now, if you have stuck around, I do have some bonus footage. You saw the red thumbnail. So listen to my MC give me an unexpected phone call about the conditions to help me address the conditions to get me resubmitted back to credit access. But that's it for today, guys. I apologize if I forgot anything. If you had a different experience going through your credit access, um, I guess, stage, then jump down in the comments and let's talk about it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and, of course, subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video because it takes a village. Cheers. Oh, and happy Thanksgiving. Cheers. For your earnest money. And it looks like this is it, I think. I sent it to you over the weekend. I said, as a matter of fact, it was yesterday morning. And I went ahead and I uploaded it to today as well. Okay, because I'm looking, I said, I look like you sent it. And I worked on Sunday, but I didn't work until Sunday afternoon. I don't think I worked on your file. Okay, I I I was I went too far. You did it. Okay. That was the last thing I needed to clear up. I finally got that uh condition from um about the uh, listing agent. Yeah. Yeah. So you were able to get an exception to from underwriting to make um, that go away? I the regional director uh, <laughs> made a notation on the file, so that that helped. Yay. So, yeah. So you just he just did that for me, so he said, "Get the rest of it cleared, so we can go head on." So hopefully, within the next couple of days, we'll be we'll be doing our uh, bank app, okay? So that's the only thing I didn't have, and I said, "Let me call her." So while I'm still at the office, I can get it done. But you already sent it to me. I just didn't check before I called you. My apologies. No worries. Known you. So you whenever. Know, I known you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be thorough, but so whenever I, I finally do get approved, because I have heard several people say um, that you'll clear all the conditions and then they'll review your file again. And then more conditions that didn't come up the first time will come back the second time. So whenever I finally do get everything cleared, will I need yes. to call back to member services to have an appointment set up so we can do bank app? Girl, no, I will call you and we will do bank app. I will, I will clear my schedule for bank app. Okay. That's the only thing that they let me clear my schedule for. So as soon as we get the um, the go ahead, once it clears credit assets, uh -huh. I will call you more than likely. Now that you just want to come up here and sign it, I'll probably just email you the paperwork. As you know, I think you have a scanner and you can sign it and send it back to me. Whatever is going to make it easier for you. I can do it. We can do it here in the office, or I can email you the documents and you sign your 1003, your bank app. You have to sign it electronically anyway. So okay, you just so you just let me know if you want to come up here and sign it. Where are you? You want? Me. I am in. Well, hold up. Let me see. Well, I guess not. I'm in Houston. Yeah, I'm in Dallas. Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> we should drive down to Houston. Uh oh, -uh. <laughs> Nashville. NACA's not going to uh, put a condition on my file because I spent too much gas money. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. So, no. So, I would just be emailing you the information, and it will probably, usually, my bank app time is between uh, 11 and 1, 11 okay. and 2. That will actually mm -hmm. work good if I need to wet sign something because I'll already be at work, and I can just print it out and wet sign it and scan it right back in. Wonderful. Everything has to be with sign. Uh, 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 okay. And so is there any documents or anything that I need to be prepared with? Like what all do you, will you be needing from me for a bank application process? Uh, you, you get, well, you, you have a copy of it because you'll be scanning it all and send that to me. Mostly they're disclosures. Okay. More than anything. The only thing that's really that important is your 1003, and you have signed that. That's your bank app. Your 1003 is your bank application, and that you're going to sign electronically. Okay, so no more like bank statements and pay stubs and all of that? No, not. Well, we still would have to keep your file up to date. Okay. But the, once it goes to bank app, they're really not asking for that type of stuff. They're asking for appraisal type stuff, survey stuff. They're asking for something totally different. But okay. we do have to keep 
said, we'll ask for updated bank statements and updated paycheck stubs. And, uh, yeah, and they'll pull a credit report and so forth. So, oh, yeah. so, okay. So that's good to know. So I, I, so whenever you call me for bank app, that means I need to go ahead and remove my freezes then from my credit reports. Yeah. Yes, because normally within two days, they would touch your file. Okay, and so do I need to pay for another credit report on my NACA file? No, no okay. they, can't, they, can't, they can't get into our NACA file, so there's something that goes on your part of your closing costs, but you don't pay for it, the bank pays for it, so. Okay. Yeah, they're just one of those things. So now, so they will come, and at the time of bank app, that's when we're going to want you to go ahead on and get your, um, your homeowner's insurance. Okay, that's good right to know. Now, uh -huh. so now, but at that point, we'll want you to go ahead on and secure your bank, uh, your insurance binder. So you, so by the time you call me, pro probably it's looking like maybe towards the end of the week. Hopefully, if everything goes good tonight, I need to already well, have my homeowner's insurance. You have a few days. You have a few days. Okay. That's, that's one of the first things that they were asked for when they come back with conditions, it's the homeowner's insurance. Okay. So I'm just telling you that. So once we put the bank out, once they start looking at the folder, that's the first thing they're going to look at. So within the next couple of days after we make bank out, you need to go ahead on and provide your, your insurance, your binder folder. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Now I asked you a bunch of questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> you were just calling okay. me for one piece of paper. It's okay. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. So, so fingers yeah, crossed. So yeah. Before I leave tonight, uh, I wanted to make sure everything was done. So the uh, underwriter hopefully can look at it tomorrow instead of, they have two days to look at it. So hopefully he can go and look at it. Um, this underwriter is really pretty good. He's not really crazy like some of them are. Okay. So, I've heard. So I've heard. But it took about a day and a half last time, so that was a pretty quick turnaround. It only took like a day and a half. Right. When you had a, your file is pretty clean. It's not some files are not as clean, and so you have a good clean file. So okay, I'm good. So yeah. Good, good, yeah. good, good. So outside of that, we're good. So okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, will... I needed to call. You. <laughs> okay well i will let my realtor know that you have called me personally and we are getting ready to be resubmitted uh yes i was going to send her email okay. to, to let her know cleared up the um the situation with the um uh, with the articles of incorporation okay well i'll let you email her then so since diego was on that email chain i'll let you go ahead and handle that Okay, no, no problem. Well, we, uh, but if you talk to her, that's fine. You can go ahead on, but I will follow with, okay. with the email. Okay. 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 Thank right. you so much. Have a good night. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.